so this topic is principle of food, uh, food processing so in which we studied about the a brief introduction of uh, uh, the status of fruits and vegetable and uh, what are the different principles that uh, are used in the preservation of uh, fruits and vegetable processing industry so first of all is the introduction so as we know uh, fruits and vegetable are highly comparative value than cereals and uh, pulses and the uh, fruits and vegetables they are more perishable in nature than cereals so losses in the fruits and vegetables uh, are high and chances to reduce the waste and enhancing the employability through post harvesting process are more so in order to uh, reduce the uh, losses uh, in fruits and vegetables and in order to reduce the wastage and uh, to enhance the employability uh, First, we have to uh, go through the post-harvest processing uh, that is uh, very much important. So the processing uh, includes pre-processing of fruits and vegetables. Before these are fit to find uh, con uh, conver conversion into the processed food. So first of all, uh, there is need to uh, pre-process fruits that is suitable for uh, uh, consumption after the conversion of uh, processed food. The food preservation and processing industries has now become a necessity than being a luxury as I told earlier. Nowadays, it, it become a necessary to our life than being a luxury. It is an important role in conversion and better utilization of uh, vegetable and uh, fruits. So in order to avoid glut and utilize uh, surplus uh, uh, during the season, it is very much necessary to employ modern methods that extend the storage life uh, for better distribution and also processing techniques uh, that uh, help to preserve them for utilization in off season on both large scale and small scale. So for food processing, therefore, refers to the application of uh, different techniques to foods in a synthetic manner for preventing losses through preservation, processing, packaging, storage and distribution and ultimately to ensure greater availability of a wide variety of foods which would be uh, which would help improve the food intake and the nutritional standard during the periods of low availability so all in all we can say that uh, by processing and by preserving foods we can available uh, uh, foods and nutritional foods and vegetables in off season and uh, when they have low availability in the uh, uh, country and we also provide a uh, nutritional and improved variety of foods instead of uh, the wastage. The main objective of fruits and vegetable processing is to supply wholesome, safe, nutritious, and acceptable food to consumers throughout the year. So, first uh, technique is uh, is cleaning. So, first pre plastic uh, in the uh, in the way of preservation is cleaning. So first we have to clean the food. So it is the unit operation in which contaminating materials that are removed from the food material and separated to leave the surface of food uh, that is unsuitable that is suitable condition for further processing. So we uh -huh. know uh, before processing the food material or the raw material should be cleaned properly. So for cleaning, we should remove all the unnecessary and unwanted dust and the material from the food. Uh, in vegetable processing, uh, we need uh, we do blanching, which help to clean product. Blanching is a process in which uh, we boil uh, uh, any kind of vegetable for a few seconds to a minute. So uh, this is blanching. So we need uh, so we do blanching in case of a, a vegetable processing. In addition, the early removal of small quantities of uh, food contaminated by organism, microorganisms prevents the subsequent loss of remaining bulk by microbial load during the storage and delay before processing. So before processing, there is uh, very much uh, uh, necessary to, uh, uh, to remove the contaminated uh, food which is contaminated by microorganisms, uh, uh, which also uh, uh, increase the microbial activity during the processing. So uh, this is all about cleaning. So further cleaning is divided into different two categories. First is wet cleaning and second is dry cleaning. 
so wet cleaning so what is wet cleaning so wet cleaning is more effective than dry cleaning for removing soil from root crops or dust and pesticide residues from soft fruits and vegetable or you can say that wet cleaning is used for uh, soft fruits and vegetable they they are very soft in nature and uh, its main purpose to remove uh, uh, soil from the roots uh, dust dust uh, and pesticides from the uh, fruits uh, from the fruits and vegetable it is uh, more effective than uh, dry method it also dust less and causes less damage uh, so in case of wet cleaning uh, there is a less damage to food than dry method so we can say that wet cleaning is much more better than dry cleaning so next is dry cleaning so dry cleaning is the procedure uh, that is used for the products that are smaller and have greater mechanical strength and they possess lower moisture content so for example grains and nuts so you can say that dry cleaning is used to, for those foods uh, who are small in size uh, and they have a uh, uh, greater mechanical strength and uh, also they possess low moisture content uh -huh. after cleaning the surface are dry and to aid preservation for further drying the main uh, groups of equipment used for drying are air classifiers magnetic separators separator based on so cleaning of food so these are the uh, uh, instruments or equipments used in dry cleaning so removing contaminants and foreign bodies a uh, physical separation of contaminants uh, from food is possible when the food has regular well shaped and uh, for example they are round in shape and separated from contaminated by exploiting their ability and roll down in upward and uh, downward conveyor belt second uh, uh, step in cleaning uh, in cleaning is sorting so second step in preservation you can say this step in preservation is sorting first is cleaning second is sorting so sorting is a process in which we separate food into different categories on the basis of their measurable physical properties uh, likewise cleaning sorting should be employed as early as possible to ensure the uniform product for subsequent processing so the main physical uh, properties uh, on the basis of uh, uh, food separated are uh, food size food weight uh, and uh, uh, shape and color next is shape and size sorting the particle size distribution of a material is expressed as either the mass fraction of material that is retained on each sieve or cumulative percentage uh, of material retained size sorting is the separation of solid into two or more fractions on the basis of different sizes next is color sorting so on the basis of color sorting foods are automatically sorted at high rates using microprocessor control color sorting equipment so in color sorting we use microprocessor controlled color sorting equipment equipment particles are fed into shot uh, uh, one at a time the angle shape and lining material of shoot are altered to control the velocity of pieces as uh, the pass of photo detector so photo detector measure the reflected color of which piece of each piece and compare it with the present standards that are already available in uh, already available in that system so that so they uh, separate the defective foods and with the help of uh, short blast of uh, compressed air next is weight uh, sorting so according to weight uh, we separate uh, food according to their weight according to their uh, different uh, density so it is done by aspiration floating uh, flotation sorting uses different uh, in density of sort food and uh, they are similar in principle and operation so this is all about weight sorting so after sorting there is a grading so grading and sorting uh, are uh, much more uh, uh, similar but uh, in case of uh, sorting we separate food on the basis of their physical properties but in grading we uh, ass we assess the overall quantity of food using the number of attributes so grading is carried out by machines or operators who are trained and simultaneously assess the number of variables so next are the basic principles Uh, of preserving biomaterials and their respective methods so if uh, uh, so first principle is if we want to reduce the temperature 
so that uh, we reduce the uh, deteriorating reaction within the biomaterial. So we use evaporating cool chamber, refrigerator storage method, cold storage method. So in this way, there are five principles are available. Uh, according to them, different methods are used to preserve uh, foods. Okay? So you can uh, read this table, go through this table so you can understand uh, the different principles and their different methods of preservation. So the methods and principle can cl further classify based on food preservation. So first is control of water activity. So if we want to control the water activity in the food, so first we have to, first method is evaporation. So in evaporation, uh, the food industry or raw material of a potential or a potential food stuff contain more water than required in the final product. So if any kind of food product that contain uh, more quantity of uh, uh, water uh, than the required quantity, then the food stuff is a liquid and easiest method to remove the water in general is to apply heat to evaporate. So uh, for that material, we need uh, that food product and uh, by heating the excess water is evaporated in the form of vapors. So the basic factor that affect the rate of evaporation are rate at which heat can be transferred to the liquid and how much quantity of heat required for evaporation, one kg of water, and how much maximum allowable temperature of the liquid. So the, these are the factors on which evaporation is a, uh, depends. Next is pressure at which evaporation takes place. So changes may, that may occur in the food stock during the, the course uh, of the evaporation process. Uh, second is dehydration. So it, it is defined as the application of heat under controlled condition to remove the majority of water normally present in the food by evaporation. So if after evaporation, if there, uh, there is a quantity available, there is a quantity of water available in that uh, food uh, material. So for that, we use dehydration. So in dehydration, uh, we heat uh, the food material under a controlled condition. So the main purpose of uh, dehydration is to extend the shelf life of food by reduction the water activities. So uh, third is osmo dehydration. So in osmo dehydration, the prepared fresh material is soaked in a thick liquid sugar solution or uh, in a strong salt solution uh, and then material is dried. So during osmotic treatment, the material losses some of its moisture. The syrup or salt that are used as a solution has a protective effect on color, flavor, and texture. That means uh, this method does not alter the color, flavor, and texture of that food material. This protective, if, uh, protective effect uh, remains throughout the drying process, and it makes uh, it it makes it possible to produce dried uh, products that are very high quality. Next is drying. So drying is a process to remove the moisture content from the food material, thereby reducing the water activity and extend the shelf life. So the main purpose of drying is to remove moisture content, uh, to reduce the water activities and to extend the shelf life of food material. So several types of dryers and, and drying methods are commercially used. This is all depends upon the material and its property uh, and their desired physical form and the characteristics of dried product. So sun drying, solar drying, atmospheric drying, like clean tower, cabinet, like tunnel, belt, full, uh, fluidized bed, puff form, mat, spray, drum, microwave, etc. are used. Second method is cold treatment. So cold treatment is the treatment like fermentation, irradiation, dielectric, humic, infrared heating, freezing, supercooling, refrigeration, etc. So in cold treatment, these type, these all types uh, methods are used. First one is fermentation. So during food fermentation, controlled action of selected microorganisms is used that alter the texture of food and preserve food by production of acids and alcohol and uh, or to produce subtle flavor, flavors and aromas which increase the quality and value of food. So in a fermentation, we can say that the uh, flavor and aroma of uh, food is uh, does not alter and the quality remains the same. Uh, it, uh, it includes the control action of microorganisms uh, that preserves the food. Next is main advantages. 
so the use of mild condition of ph and temperature which maintain the nutritional properties and sensory characteristics of food uh, the production of food have uh, flavors and texture that cannot be achieved by other method so they, uh, their energy consumption is very low uh, they have low capital uh, and operating cost and they have simple technology wait for a minute please so these are the main advantages of fermentation next is irradiation so in irradiation we use so different types of rays like gamma rays from isotopes x rays and electrons are used so they are commercially used so the main advantage of uh, irradiation is in which uh, there is uh, no or little heating of food is used and uh, it may be uh, negligible so packaged and frozen foods may be treated so in which we are uh, used to package or frozen foods fresh foods may be preserved uh, preserve in a single operation and without the use of chemical so in which we does not use any type of chemical preservation so its energy requirement is very low and it also maintain the nutrition value of uh, uh, fruits and vegetable as compared to other methods so processing is automatically controlled and they have very low operation cost so these are the uh, exa- uh, advantages of radiation so uh, application of radiation so where we apply radiation if we want to sterilize any food if we reduce the uh, amount of pathogens prolong the shelf life for control the ripening disinfection inhibition of food sprouting so in these cases we use the radiation next is dielectric opening and infrared heating so dielectric energy and infrared energy are two forms of electromagnetic energies they are both transmitted as waves which penetrate food and are then absorbed and converted to heat so the uh, dielectric opening the uh, dielectric and infrared are electro in the form of used in the form of electromagnetic energies they are penetrate into the food material and they absorb the excess uh, moisture and convert to heat in contrast ohmic heating uses the electrical resistance of foods to directly converted uh, electricity to heat dielectric and ohmic heating are direct method in which heat is generated within the product whereas infrared heating is an indirect method that relies on heating that is generated externally okay so but also they uh, by convection and lesser extent of production next method is freezing so freezing is the reduction in temperature generally by supercooling followed by crystallization of water nucleization and finally crystal growth so in freezing we uh, we, uh, we slow down the uh, temperature and uh, we uh, uh, by supercooling the conditions and they are followed by crystallization of water nucleization and finally crystal growth so methods of quick freezing so how we do quick freezing so uh, this is uh, done by indirect contact with refrigeration or by blast cold air or by direct immersion in a refrigerating medium so first is freezing by indirect contact with refrigeration so in which food may be frozen by being uh, placed in a contact with metal surface which is cooled by a refrigerant or by pack or by packed in a can or cooled by immersion in a refrigerator so also food packed in paper boxes may be frozen by contact with refrigerated metal plates which may be removing or stationary next is air blast freezing so in air blast freezing a uh, very cold air is obtained and uh, a blast of air is directed through refrigerating valves uh, for a greater effect the cold air is blasted uh, in the insulated tunnels so the material to be frozen may be placed on the moving belt within variables of moved concurrent and air blast next is freezing by direct immersion so uh, in which low low temperature drying was beginning of quick freezing since liquid are good heat conductor and a product can be frozen rapidly by direct immersion of low temperature liquid for example drying and solution so freezing time so definition of freezing time is a function of two instances 
when freezing starts and when it stops. It is a very difficult to deter, uh, determine the freezing time since freezing will occur at a different rates and at different points on, uh, and it is uh, also different for different food products. So freezing will be faster, faster at some points on the surface and in the body of a piece of food. There is a point which cools slowest. So the highest body temperature at which ice crystal have a stable existence in a food material is known as freezing point. Uh, so at that point, we can say that the start of freezing point. Because the nature of materials of foods and the presence of water soluble constraints, all water does not crystal, crystallize at this, at this temperature. This is called cryoscopic temperature. Next is uh, super cooling. So it occurs when the temperature of water is lower below the freezing point and crystallization does not occur. So in super cooling, there is no crystallization. So super cooling provides the means of determining the impact effect of a reduction in temperature relative to initial freezing point. Next is vaporization. This is the process in which heat is removed from a confined place and material for the purpose of maintaining lower temperature. So the standard unit of generating heat capacity is one ton for refrigeration. This is derived on the basis of removal of latent heat of fusion uh, of one ton of water at 32 degree Fahrenheit or zero degree Celsius to produce one ton of ice. Third is to control microbial activity. So to control microbial activities, different methods are used. First is pasteurization. So in pasteurization, relatively mild yield treatment is used uh, in which food is heated below 100 degrees Celsius. So it slows down the acid, it slows the acid foods. It is used to minimize possible health hazards from pathogenic microorganisms and it also increases shelf life of food for several days. In acidic foods, it is extended up to, uh, extended the shelf life for several months by destruction and the spoilage of microorganisms or enzymatic in inactivations. Next is heat sterilization. It is the unit operation in which food are heated at a sufficiently high temperature and for sufficiently long time to destroy them. So, heat, so pasteurization in, in, in pasteurization we use mild temperature but in heat sterilization we use relatively high temperature and uh, for a long time uh, to destroy microbial and enzymatic activities as a result uh, the sterilized food have a shelf life in excess of six months at ambient temperature provided they are uh, aseptically uh, packaged after sterilization to avoid post sterilization contamination so severe heat treatment of sterilization sometimes cause damage to the nutrition and it also avoided by the development of suitable processing technology. So this is all about the principles of uh, uh, processing units. So 